In accident and emergency, the medical team continued to monitor Erkin Batter. They got a very strong spasm in the home around half past 12. I bring, bring him into Rotunda Hospital, bring uh, ambulance as well, but I can't wait that, so I go to Rotunda Hospital. Spasm is very strong, That's the, that means his all muscles getting spasm of the face, of the arm, feet, everything. Ten days ago, he started vomiting, and uh, we come in. And they get um, a euro test. They say that's fine. Interestingly enough, he presented last week with a, a viral illness, which um, he had symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea and presumptive gastroenteritis. Whether or not this could have been a trigger for temperature and him getting a seizure from that, that certainly is a possibility. But I think following his uh, attendance here last week and um, a seizure as well, which may have uh, had a temperature or, or, or may not have had a temperature, and we're unsure about this, it's certainly very wise to further investigate him and observe him in, in the hospital, which is what we're doing. The test that we've done, um, what it means, just to send the blood test from the rotunda for basic um, blood investigations that include a blood count, um, his kidney functions and liver functions, um, and a, a, a culture, for example, to make sure that he, he wasn't septic, meaning he doesn't have a blood infection. And these be sort of the initial tests so far. We've also done an x-ray check of his chest because he, he's had a, a cough. And also, um, I will be trying to get a urine as well because that could be the source of his temperature. So those are the basic investigations. And I think if anything else pans out during his, his observational stay here, then we will obviously need to um, investigate further. The younger child is, I mean, the, our threshold for admission and observation will be much, much uh, lower. And I think that they, they're unable to tell us what's wrong with them. And we need to, to be sure that we're not sending them home with, with a serious problem. Downstairs in the day ward, Kira waits to see Alana return from surgery. I just thought we'd like kind of just, I'd be nervous for her, like. It's the first time kind of in hospital, stay, like not staying over, but in. It's just a bit scary for her. There you go, there's mommy. Hello. Hello, precious girl. Watering never stops, but the stickiness and the greenish discharge continues. It clears up with an antibiotic, but then it comes right back again. And it's really annoying. Every time you turn around and look at the child, there's green stuff all over the eyes, and the skin gets very chapped underneath, and they get, you know, chapped red, red uh, skin on the cheeks. But it went very smoothly, and once she was asleep, what I did was I passed a tiny silver probe down the tear duct. The tear duct's a, a narrow passage, finer than a hair, from the inner corner of the eye, sort of halfway down the back of the nose, and, and then drains into the throat. And um, Alana's was blocked somewhere here, so we just passed a tiny little silver probe down and unblocked it on both sides, and then I was able to syringe a little water down, and it went down very smoothly, so we know the tear ducts are now, uh, were now open, and that problem should be solved. She shouldn't have any further sticky eyes. Uh, I expect Alana to do very well. I'll see her again in a couple of weeks and just check her out, but I'm hoping that she doesn't have any further problems. We can close that book. Meanwhile, following an extended stay in hospital, Erkin Batter is ready to go home. Erkin Batter was, as admitted under Dr. Louise Kine's team, having a chat with uh, the team's registrar. His observations were, were normal overnight and within normal parameters. His investigations uh, were normal and uh, what the, the team had decided was to, to educate um, Ekambata's parents regarding giving 
antipyretics, which are, for example, paracetamol or ibuprofen. So, so measures that can be taken to reduce temperature when he gets one. And also um, what to do if he were to get further seizures. Seizure activity he had uh, is, is called a tonic-clonic uh, seizure. This means that um, they generally can get stiffening of the limbs, they can get shaking of, the, of all four limbs, uh, eyeball rolling upwards. Um, and, and, and tightening of the teeth, for example. And so he had uh, that. It, it spontaneously resolved, according to his parents, um, after two to three minutes. And it usually is a good sign. Uh, those that would be worrying would be those that last a lot longer, and, and they can last up to half an hour sometimes. But generally, most children who last, uh, these kind of seizures last under five minutes and um, are usually not serious. All the results is fine. I'm happy about that. Yeah. He is the better man. These kind of events uh, look very, very serious and look life-threatening for parents. And I think that um, it, it's very, very important that we get a clear message over to the parents, especially if after a night of observation, if we feel everything's all right, to be able to reassure parents in the correct way. And again, it's, it's to be able to get that message over um, you know, in, in, in the, the right language. You want your children to be healthy, you want them to be happy and be able to do everything the same as everybody else. And at the moment he is. As soon as I walk into the hospital, I want to bring him straight over and put him on the scales because that's something I can do for him. I can help him with the physio and all that sort of thing, but I can get his weight up. And I like having that control and being able to do that. It's something very positive I can do for him. Um, and then if we get a good result then and we go into the lung function, and get a good result, that's it. You know, that's uh, dotted the I's and crossed the teeth. <laughs> the aim of treatment is to lead a full, active, independent life. Our success is when we've taught parents and children to be responsible for their health and be responsible for the cystic fibrosis. Unfortunately, as he gets older, the lungs do deteriorate and the lung function does deteriorate. Um, thankfully, it's not at a huge rate at the moment, but. When he's sick, he, he was at 52 last Monday, um, or the previous Monday. This Monday, he's at 70 after a week on, a, on antibiotics, which is a huge jump. Prevent the lungs deteriorating by keeping the mucus out of the lungs, because if the, the mucus is in there, <coughs> it's, the army is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. It's such a complex thing. Like, he's, he's every three months now, <coughs> next year could be completely different. He, he could just be really, really well for the whole year, so he wouldn't be on IVs at all. He may have to have a lung transplant. It's, it's in my head, and I would always look, I'd be pessimistic. It probably would be the right way to say it, because when you're a pessimist, you're surprised an awful lot more. When you're optimistic, you can be disappointed a lot. He doesn't ask very many questions about it. Um, he listens a lot. Um, and I know if he had, myself and Matt would be very close and as I said, we spend an awful lot of time together because like if he's on IVs or anything like that, I'll do it because I'm a bit of a control freak. I don't like anyone else doing it. We would always say that Matthew is a 12 and a half year old normal child who happens to have cystic fibrosis, who happens to need daily physiotherapy, daily enzyme therapy and daily monitoring of his calorie intake but aside from that he is a very active child we don't see him for the whole summer he's partying in Wexford somewhere and he leads a good and healthy life we'll answer every question as it comes but I don't give him all the information he hasn't ever come back to us about the the life expectancy thing we haven't ever discussed that um, but it, it is there you know, and he would know about it. Um, I don't particularly want to discuss it with them. Um, and I'm going to do my utmost best to make sure that um, he outlives me anyway. <laughs> that is a fantastic result. How long is it since he's been at 70? Uh, August, actually. It's the last time. August last year.
know how to care for your toddler. Nutrition advice for you and your toddler. SMANutrition.ie Proudly sponsors Temple Street Children's Hospital. My life is pretty full on. Ten things at once. That's what we all...